Okay, I want you to stop before you watch this video and if you have not seen the first part of this shopping trip series to Peach Guitars, please go and watch that first. I'll put a link here, but otherwise you're gonna spoil a bit of a surprise and also be a bit confused about what's going on. Anyway, if you've seen that first part, at the end of that, we had, I had tried three custom shop SGs and one ludicrous <laughs> um, Jimi Hendrix signature SG, which is the white one with uh, three pickups. It's an SG Custom, it's a 1967 based on the one he played back then. Now I actually went to Peach thinking, I'm gonna get that guitar and then everyone's going to have a go at me in the comments about buying that guitar. Well, I played the Pelham Blue one, which uh, I love the look of that. Uh, it just didn't sound quite right for me. Uh, then I played the, that was a 64, then I played the 61 Cherry Red, which didn't feel like the style of SG that I was going for and it felt a bit more rocky as opposed to the sort of playing I tried to do. And then I'd played the TV Gold one. Now I love the look of this. Like I'd never seen TV Gold SG before this and I fell in love with it. So at the end of the last video I said, I told the shop that I'm probably going to buy this. There's a bit of money left in the budget, so let me look at something else. Um, it was a bit like the real life version of going on the shopping page and pricing everything from high to low. It was a sort of giddy feeling. So I went out into the shop and said, I'll have a look at some custom shop strats. I've never had a custom shop strat, a Fender one. I've got my um, Fender Standard from 89, and now I've got a Mac Mull, and I've got uh, John Case Strat. I wanted to see what the difference was. So let's just start at that point. This is where I was. So I went out into the shop and they don't have a lot of the custom stuff uh, always out because obviously uh, most of their orders are done online now and a point there you can only go by appointment. So um, uh, so they tend to keep a lot of the stuff you know, they photographed it and they put it back in the box, but they have a few out and you can always request stuff um, that you've seen on the site. And also uh, the guy that helped me, Jeff, was very helpful and uh, helped me to figure stuff out. So I went out there and I found this shell pink strap. And I, I mean, I love the look of shell pink. It's a color I want to have a guitar in one day. So yeah, let's hear a bit of that and see what I thought. <laughs> So this is a Custom Shop 59 faded aged shell pink. So you can see it had relicking and everything. It was a nice guitar to play. It didn't, you know, fit me personally. The sound was um, slightly more on that jangly side of things, you know, that 50s character. Um, and overall, I wouldn't have bought this guitar, but uh, someone will fall in love with it. It's a gorgeous looking thing. Um, so then I said, um, have you got any master built strats? Now I knew in the back of my mind what I was looking for. They've had a black master built strat with the letters H-A-R. It's master built, I think Dennis Galushka. Uh, they've had that there for months. I think, uh, you know, and I've, I've seen one sold before, but this one hasn't sold for whatever reason and the price has come down quite a lot. So like, I wasn't going to buy a master built strat, but I thought, let me have the chance to play one while I'm there. It's not often you get the chance. So this is the first time I'm ever seeing, touching and playing one. So let's see what happened.
So as my first time playing a master built, you know, this was really quite fantastic. Now, the thing about this guitar is it's got a bit of history behind why it is the way it is. There was a guy back in 1950, hang on a minute, I've got to read this on the thing. <laughs> Uh, 1955 called Howard Reed Jr. and he was the first person to ask for a custom colour at the Fender factory and instead of the two-tone burst that was normal then he said I've got to have it in black and that started off other colours. Now you can see this was relicked quite a lot it's got a fat neck it was quite um, involved to play you know more one of those that's fighting back but I actually quite like that so for me it, it was nice to play it was fun and it was a bit of a statement guitar now it's the lettering on there that puts a lot of people off. It's sort of like, you know, buying a Ferrari and it having the, the letters of the guy who first asked for a, you know, the funny colour, the different colour. It, it, it's, you know, it's one for the real history buffs and that's fine. I know they've sold these, uh, I've seen them on other websites as well. So people are obviously interested. It's quite, it's an interesting guitar, but it wasn't going to be for me. I knew that. But it was lovely to play it and it was a really nice guitar to play. Now looking at a master built thing, I could instantly tell that the attention to detail is at a higher level. It feels more like an individual instrument even than the custom shop. And I explained it to someone else, it's like going from an, a, you know, a standard, um, or from a player to a standard feels like a step, from a standard to a custom feels like a step. And this feels equally as big as, of a step, if not bigger. But, you know, just the way it feels in the hands and everything feels like someone has really really done a job on it um so then i knew they had one other master built in there and i'd just seen it on the peach channel um in a thumbnail i think and i hadn't had a chance to watch the video so i didn't know much about this guitar but i said i think you've got another master built it's more than i was going to spend um it was uh, seven thousand nine hundred and ninety nine pounds but could i please have a go at it you know there's not a, there's not exactly a lot money left in the budget to buy that and the gold SG but maybe I'll just prefer the master built and have to leave the SG um yeah let's bring that one out shall we <laughs> Well, look, I figure you guys have been waiting long enough. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they brought this thing out and it's the lightest strat I've ever come across. I don't know how much it weighs. Uh, I have got some scales coming for, for guitar weighing actually, so I'll weigh it in a, for the next video. I'm purposefully not showing you any of my normal close-up B-roll and all that nice stuff because I want this to be about the raw experience uh, of this guitar. Um, I don't think I've ever formed such a quick attachment to a guitar. Now this is a Paul Waller 
um, master built. It's a 50s Strat, mainly based on the 56. It's obviously an HSS, but it's also not a trem. It's a hard tail. I'd never even played a hard tail before. Um, and there's something more direct through the body, a bit like a Telecaster. You get a bit more top end. And um, yeah, I can't, when I'm holding it, I'm just playing it. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's, it's got a, obviously it's got like a relic neck with, I think it's like bird's eye maple because you've got all the little things. It's got gold hardware. Again, it's just so light and it just, <laughs> it's out of tune and everything. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing it for the last few days and just absolutely caning it. Uh, played it in the shop and then I, the guy came back in and I said, look, I can't buy that gold SG because I'm just fallen in love with this thing. Uh, I wasn't intending to buy a master belt, not yet, maybe in five years or something because you can't go, it's difficult to go backwards in this game. Like when you've gone up and up and up, you know, I've got a custom shop telly, I've got boutique built straps, I've got custom shop Gibsons, I've got vintage Gibson. Becomes difficult to look backwards once you start going forwards like that. And I thought, you know, I shouldn't do that yet. But when you find something that's, you know, he did make a series of HSSs, but they were all different. Um, and when you find an, an individual one that you love, you, you just go for it. So, yeah. You're going to see, obviously, this in a lot of videos coming up. I'll do a specific video about this. Do a specific video about hard tails versus non hard tails and all that sort of stuff. How does. I've never. I'd never even played a humbucker in a strat and I was curious. So we'll talk about that and yeah, we'll get all the tones and everything. But the thing is, the story doesn't end here. Despite buying the single most expensive guitar I've ever bought, despite the fact that I found one of the most personality filled, filled guitars that I have. And by the way, again, that is a completely subjective thing because um, peop everyone's probably, everyone who's got sort of a set of guitars probably has one that they think is the most, you know, awesome and everything. And someone will walk in the room and pick a different one, but that's just the way life goes. But so far, everyone I've shown this one to, you know, you hear, you know, on, the, on the odd occasion, you hear guitarists talk about the one guitar they've got that everyone loves. For example, um, my friend Martin, who's been lending me gear, his, his Novo Cirrus T, um, everyone who touches it wants it. I think this will be my version of that. It's just, it's just very, very, um, yeah, I love it, really do. Now, as I said, this is not where the story ends. Let's carry on. After I said, okay, look, I've got to buy this and I'm gonna have to sadly leave the SG. That was the end of the story for the SG. But I said, I also came here wanting to try a 1960 reissue Les Paul. And I said to the guy, look, I can't, I'm not going to be able to buy it. But for my channel and everything, I just want to know that I've tried what, I've, what it is and I want to try it and see what the difference is. And I also wanted to try the most expensive guitar in the shop, actually, which was the historic collection or historic reissue Flying V, Karina Flying V. So I'm really lucky that I got to try those. So let's watch a couple of clips. But... This is where, I, as I said, it all unravels and it's a bit of a fever dream. There's more of the story. But let's hear those two guitars and I'll tell you a bit more.